everybody, Joe Menza here, and we're going to do another watercolor painting. I thought I'd show you one I did kind of yesterday. I don't know if you could see, but you got a little sun kind of going down in the background of the mountains, a little sailboat here. I thought I'd do something similar like that, try to get a little bit more, some warmer colors into the painting. So let's go ahead and do that now, and I'll show you how, to, how I do a little sun. So we're going to start off with our usual... As I always do, I give it a good three coats of water with a full loaded hake brush. Second one I might rub off a little bit on the canteen, but it's a pretty wet brush, so I let it go, I let it cascade down. So the next thing that I do is, as always, I do raw sienna. Now when you do this, you're going to keep in mind where you're going to have your sun coming down at. You want to leave some lit area where you want to leave a little bit of white paper. Something in watercolor, even I don't do enough of, is you know thinking about how you're going to leave some light paper. So we know we're going to have probably a little bit of water here. Put a little bit of raw sienna here. And you can even draw a little outline with your raw sienna. I do that sometimes. I'll say, well, I'm going to have some bushes here, or I'm going to have this here, or whatever. So there's my little raw sienna wash that's laying in our little bit of a background. And then we're going to come in with some orange by using light red and raw sienna. And we're going to put in a little bit in here and then we're going to want to do a little bit down here because we're going to have the sun coming, coming in there. So we got a red there. We're going to get a little bit of now ultramarine blue and a little Payne's Gray. And we'll just drop some in here for the upper area of the sky. <clears throat> Oops, put a little too much on the brush. I had to squeeze out some fresh paint. I usually use it dry so that I can control the amount. So there's our sky. It looks pretty busy, but we're going to have some trees and stuff in the background, so it's no, no big thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our coin and we're going to wrap it in some uh, paper towel roll, flatten it out, and then take our coin and just circularly turn it very gently, and there's your circular area for your sun coming down. And that's it. It's really that easy. That's it. So now back to our, our little water here. I wanted to do that before it dry. We'll get some some of the blue in for the water. We want the colors that we have in our sky to be represented down in our water here. So we got some nice, pretty nice warm colors going on here. So rather than do the last one I did mountains, let's just do sort of some background trees, some some foliage back here, just to mix it up a little bit. So we'll make up some green using cad yellow and ultramarine blue. And we'll just put in some distant trees all the way across. Come back with a little bit more blue and make it a little bit more of a darker green, just to kind of mix it up. You want this to be kind of wet because it will create some neat effects as it dries. This is going to create sort of some, some layering. A little bit of neutral now or, or Payne's Gray. Just to create some... Just to create some more closer looking greenery. Okay. Now, let's take, we'll wash the brush a little bit, take some raw sienna, and we'll just create a, a little bit of a shoreline here. A little more raw sienna. So there's a little bit of a beach thing happening over here. A little bit of a raw sienna and a little bit of brown. So 
So some different colors than what we're usually probably used to seeing, but we want to warm things up and make a nice warm little scene here. Okay. Now, as far as these little background trees, if you want to, you can sc scratch in some branch work. You want to make, you don't have to do this, but it does give the effect that there's something going on back here. If it's, you feel it's too far away to do, then you can just leave it the way it is. <clears throat> now, just to kind of cover up a little bit, I don't want all of those branches to be showing. I'm just going to dab in a little bit here. All right. So that's it for that. Now we're going to come up with some little bit of a shore area here that we're looking across. So let's get a little bit more raw sienna, a little brown. We'll bring it down around here and we'll create some, just some nice clumping land here. Let me get some neutral, some Payne's gray. And just let the bristle tips do the work. And then add a little bit of ultramarine blue just to tie things kind of together here. And then we'll take our card and we'll just scratch in some fresh grasses. All the way across. Just do a lot, a lot of it. You can use a fingernail for this, you can use a card to get some fresh grass going in the foreground. Just a really fresh, sort of a warm picture. Take a little light red even. Plop in a little light red just to continue on with that, that warmth. And you can even put some little, little dots of, make it look like there's some willows there. Okay, next thing's next. As you know, I like trees. You could actually stop here. This, this, this could actually be a stopping point if you're happy with your picture. But I want to add some trees, so we're going to add some trees here. And another thing you can do is, I go up and down with, it's just something I started doing, but you can make a tree, Let's we'll make one over here, and you can put it in sideways like this and get a very rough side of a tree going up. And that looks interesting too. You can create sort of a different look for your tree and make it look very rough as opposed to what this looks like. So we'll just we'll leave that go a little bit. Up to you how you want to do it. But it's just it's another way to make a tree. If you're watching this, you're probably making trees yourself by now. I'm sure you're happy with it, but it, it's something that you can try. And then, of course, what I like to do is I like to give my trees a look like they have some bark on them. And this is something you don't have to do either. This is just something that I do. You know, just to give a little bit more of some textures going on here. And then finally, I'll take my number three brush with a lot of water, mixing it in with my darker brown tones, and we'll start laying in some branches. This is this is one of the probably not so fast and loose 
parts of doing these paintings is these little branches. These are probably the most detail that I'll do. But after time of doing them, you'll get to the point to where they just flick off and it'll it'll go pretty pretty easily. I don't want to go too crazy with them. But you do want it to be kind of convincing. And like I always say, you can leave them like this or you can add leaves. It's up to you. It's all up to you how you do it. And once I got a little bit on my brush, I always come back and I'll add some additional grasses. Could add a little flicks off the sides of the tree. So the last but not least is we'll uh, add some <clears throat> leaves. And just sort of looking, we've got a little bit of greens and browns. I mean, you could do some reddish leaves with that reddishness coming through. So maybe take a little raw sienna and a little light red. And just start laying in some leaves off your somewhat dry hake brush. So you get a nice little balance, a little more light red on there. Nice little balance going there. Then we'll add, maybe we'll just add a little bit of yellow to that light red. Just to vary it up a little bit for this tree. bit more light red, a little more yellow. This guy's a little brighter, maybe the way the sun is coming through, this is shining a little bit brighter here. I always like to leave a little bit, sort of an archway, it gives you kind of something you're looking through something, it makes you want to look through there to get to where it is that your eyes want to look. Now we'll add just a little shadow color. Just a little lightly where we think the, the darker areas are going to be inside the leaf area. That sounded weird, didn't it? <laughs> Same thing over here, a little light red and a little bit of brown. And we'll just get some darker shadow areas in here. And you can always come back if you feel like the areas that you just did are lacking a little, like where you just left it off. You want to add a little bit of a branch there so that it looks logical that there's some trees hanging there. And the sky holes, as they're called. Since we covered up some of them. Okay, just flick in a few more little grasses here. <clears throat> and just a little bit more shadow color there. Okay, so we have our setting sun and our very warm looking, our very warm looking scene here. Very nice, very warm, a lot of colors. I know a lot of times I do browns and greens. In a sunset, it kind of changes how your eyes sort of look at things. So we've got a sunset over the lake, and this one's going to require a little drying time. If you want, throw a couple birds in here. Maybe, maybe this time we'll put the we'll put a couple of birds over this way, so that they're not competing with the sun too much. And then lastly. Sign it, sign it over here, and there we have it, just a nice warm sun setting scene, and I will show close-ups of it after it dries, 
and after following the video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, comment, so I know you're out there. Take care. All right, so here's the finished painting, and one thing I did off camera I meant to do that I forgot was I didn't put in a reflective sun into the water. So I added that same technique with the tissue, um, and then I swept in just a little bit of water here and wiped it just to give a little bit of a ripple over the top so you can tell you're not looking at the exact same thing, just a ripple effect. So that's it. Thanks again for watching.